Facebook page on that. All righty, shalom, shalom. We gotta get out of that page. You gotta close some windows or not. We're bird. Go to my page mm -hmm. and start monitoring questions. All righty, so we're here. Shalom, shalom. We're gonna take your questions, start commenting. We'll give everybody a few minutes to um, to log in. You'll get a notice that we're on the air, and we'll be with you for. Um, that's fine. We'll be with you for up to uh, an hour, an hour and a half, depending upon how much feedback we get. Minimize so you'll have less chance of buffering. Try to close out as much as you can, including shutting down the radio. Okay. So we're glad where you're with us. Uh, Sister Mariani is going to be monitoring your questions. Baruch Hashem, Yahuba, you're on. Yeah, there we are. Yes. Make sure you're on my page. So you can, are you on my page or your page, Sister Marianne? You need to close out and get onto my page. Okay. Okay, okay. close out, please. So we'll give everybody a chance to log in. Mm -hmm. I can enter the So prepare your thoughts, your questions. We're coming to you in our letter. Another turtle side chat from Goshen Bissafon. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Sister Mariani is working away. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure to be with you all. And give it a few minutes. It'll take time. Just reboot. And so begin to type in your questions. We're here to meet with you and to greet you. If you're new to our ministry, you could introduce yourself to us. Good stuff. Especially after a long service, worship and praise. What a message. Oh, I learned so much today. None of that stuff was prepared. I, I didn't have any notes. I'm waiting for it to load. Cast and load again. It should be loading any second. There you go. That just doesn't work. Okay, we're ready to start taking your comments and your questions. But uh, I learned so much today, and I had not prepared any of those remarks. Those were all, all from <laughs> from the rough. So praise Yahuwah. Praise His Kadosh name. Everybody's getting their notice right now. So this is going to be a delay. And of course, there's a little bit of a delay in also getting your questions. So we're gonna we're gonna need a little patience. How many of you like our new microphone back there? You see it right there? That's a brand new microphone. We just got that shipped in. See that? The new microphone. It even has a spray nozzle. See, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so now you, all of you see that we, where your tithe go, you see that, that new microphone right there? <laughs> you know, that's a sign to the surrounding community. <laughs> that Mariami's back in the house. <laughs> so again, we're here for you. If you have questions or comments, uh, on today's teachings, the Sister Mariani will be handling your questions and your comments. Um, the, the YouTube was fixed, as many of you know, but the radio for some reason was left out today, so I guess Satan is taking his best shot uh, with each, each and every device. But he's a liar, so we are prepared. We're here right now. And uh, we are prepared. I think that, uh, let's see, we have Linda Neguyan. Yes, yeah, shalom to you too. Shalom, nice to have you with us. Any questions? Just type, type your questions in. Or any comments, and you'd like to have any questions answered, we'll give, give you a few minutes to, to uh, get ready. Hallelujah. And uh, we're still so excited 
about to do restoration scriptures as well. Excited to be here. Yes, Olivia. <coughs> Did you watch us on YouTube? We were just on YouTube. All our live services are on YouTube. Don't worry too much. Melinda's. Uh, yeah, let us know if you were able to watch us uh, on YouTube as well. Don't forget, we're going to be on the air. Don't forget, we're going to be on the air tomorrow uh, for the Feast of Trumpets, 12 o'clock. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Most of your comments are going to come across. Okay, Jesse and Cassandra, you want to read that? Yeah, it says, um, <clears throat> Shalom, off topic from today's service, but can you explain what days were being fasted on in Romans 14? Okay, in Romans 14, and of course, um, grab the scriptures for me in case I need them. It, it says, it's a good question. We're looking right now, the, the, the small one, like right around verses 3, 4, and 5, where it says, One man esteems one day, another man esteems another day. That every man be fully convinced in his own mind. Uh, what, what the church tries to do, as you know, guys, is try to make that a, a Shabbat option. Like, you know, one person chooses Sunday, one person chooses Saturday, whatever. Any Roman day, they're all wrong. To keep Shabbat, let every man move, turn the mic a little bit more toward me. That one. The yeah. That every man. And make it a little louder and more true. Let every man be fully convinced, there you go, in his own mind. Now that's not what it means. If you look at the context there, the context there is in terms of fasting uh, or actually eating. It's, it's more in the context of eating, okay? So if you look at the context in Romans 14, let's go there. It says, One man esteems one day, one man esteems another day. Let every man be fully convinced in his own mind. It's talking about eating habits and what day to eat. So, for instance, there are some believers who believe that eating meat is not good, so they don't eat meat. Or they, or it's other believers that eats eats only meat and doesn't have a balanced diet. They believe that. Okay, so that's not good. Um, He's saying, let us not, number one, judge one another. Uh, because the, the topic in Romans chapter 14, don't have too many windows open. In Romans chapter 14, it talks about verse 2. One believes all food is tov. Others believe that he who is weak eats only vegetables. So let him that eats vegetables despise not him who does not eat meat. And he that does not eat meat, let him not... And him that does not eat meat, let him not judge the one who eats meat. For Elohim have received, has received all born-again believers. So who are you that judges another man's slave? To his own master he stands or falls. But he will be made to stand, for Elohim is able to make him stand. One indeed judges one day above another, another judges every day alike. And let each one be fully persuaded in his own mind. So this is not talking about Shabbat or, you know, as long as you worship... It doesn't matter if you go to church on Sunday. It doesn't matter if you keep the, the feasts of the Torah. None of that matters. The only thing that really matters is that you're convinced you're right. That's not what it's saying. Paul would never, Shaliach Shaul, would never give people permission to choose their own appointed time when Yahweh re revealed his appointed time. Um, and so, so that's talking about fasting. Let's get back to his question again. I don't have it here anymore. Well, supposedly it's supposed to. He said something about Romans and um, see the problem. Fasting, fasting. What are the days? Right. That it's the problem to? with this is the comments disappear. Yeah, I don't like that. But it's just one small inconvenience. Okay. Maybe they're here. Let me check. Um. Maybe yes. Yeah. They're here. Now scroll down further. Uh, He's got them. Uh, That's good. From today's verse, can you explain what days are being fasted on in Romans 14? Okay, so I don't know this as much about fasting as they are about eating. <coughs> okay, in other words, one person eats vegetables on uh, Yom Sheni. Another person eats vegetables on Yom Shishi. 
One person eats meat on, on Yom Echad. Another person eats vegetables on Yom Echad. So I think it's more like what day is the day to eat meat? What day is the day to eat vegetables? I don't see the fasting in this verse, although, although admittedly it would apply to fasting. You know, because you know, one person said, although now I know that we do along those lines in the Dadachi. Okay, remember? I mean, I don't have the Dadachi in front of me, but I know that in the Dadachi, there are instructions. Do you remember what day it was? What? In the Dadachi, where there was one, where I believe there was a day a week, or maybe it was before Mikvot, before Mikvot, where there were days of fasting. Mm -hmm. Before Mikvot? Yeah, see the apostles in They the, also uh, speak somewhere about fasting before the Shabbat, like on the sixth day. In the sixth day? Yeah. So in the Dadachi, which is the teachings of the Twelve, uh, we have the, the practice of the early Shlichim, the early apostles, where they would, uh, from what I remember, and Mariami just confirmed it, they would fast on the sixth day of the week, uh, before to get ready for Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And also, it was, it was, I believe it was several days before, um, before a mikvah, before a water immersion of a, of a, new, yeah. of a new believer was to take, yes. was to take place. Mm -hmm. Keep it open so we can see the comments. That's, am, that's I what am. I need the most. The I'm, format. I'm watching the comments. Yeah. But sometimes we have to review. You know, yes. Like with, with Jesse's okay. So, brother, Romans 14 specifically is not talking about what days we should fast. It's the principle of we're free to eat anything on the menu, Leviticus chapter 11. We're free to eat anything kosher as long as it's on the menu. We should not judge others who have different eating habits and they should not judge us. We should just keep our eyes on Yeshua and enjoy our own food as our preferences, that he gives us the freedom to have the, those preferences, as long as it's on the menu. So everybody, whether you eat meat or you eat vegetables only, everybody has to check the menu in Vayikra, in Leviticus chapter 11, okay? That's the issue, is it on the menu? What you personally eat or what I personally eat is not, is between us and Yahoo, as long as it's been certified as rabbinically kosher. Now. We're not talking about worldly rabbinically kosher certified where you pay money to have the hot dogs blessed by a rabbi. We're talking about certified by Yeshua. Very good question. We have another one from Bart? We have one from Bart. It okay, is... now we'll get back to Jesse. I think he has a follow-up. Please, could you give us an explanation? By the way, I'm sorry. We're doing these new Facebook meetings as turtle side chats. Okay, we went back to the... Remember, we lost the concept of turtle side chat. We tried Uber for a while. We didn't feel that we were reaching as many people as we wanted to. Mm -hmm. we, were reach, we were reaching some people regularly. I mean, we miss people like Leanne and other people. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing we can do. We, we reach more people this way, so we have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Mm -hmm. um, so, go ahead. Let's, I want you to read Bart's question. Shalom, Brother Bart. Shalom, and, Bart. Um, yom, yom Tra Sameach for tomorrow. Yom yes. So go ahead and read that question. Please, could you give us an explanation on Daniel 12, 11? And he quotes, And from the time that which is continual is taken away, and the abomination that lays waste is set up, is 1,290 yamim, days. Daniel 12, 12, Blessed is he who is waiting earnestly and comes to the 1,000 Three hundred and thirty-five days. What are the days and the difference of forty-five? Okay, so the first, the first part of the question was verse eleven, correct? Yes. Okay, you can hear me in real time or twelve eleven. Delay? I can hear you in, in delay. real time. Well, you're gonna need it's to do both. I am doing both. Okay. So why is there? I, bet, I guess your question is why is there a discrepancy between Daniel chapter twelve verse eleven and Daniel chapter twelve verse? 12, 12, right? Why is there a discrepancy? Very simple. Um, from the time that is continual, and the abomination that lays waste is set up, there should be 1,290 days. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a different version. Okay, so from the time of the, of the Great Tribulation, okay, 
until the abomination of desolation takes place, which is three and a half years into the last seven years of this age. Okay, so think of it this way. There's the last seven years of this age. So halfway into the last seven and a half years of this age, the northerner, the anti-Mashiach, the Mashiach Neged, enters the rebuilt temple. I believe there will be a rebuilt temple. And declares himself to have authority over life and death, or he declares himself to be Aloha. In Arabic, it's Allah. In Hebrew, it's Elohim. So he may not even use Yahuwah. He may just say Aloha or Allah, okay? Because the, the Muslims know him as Allah, and the Jews that speak Aramaic know him as Allah, Eloha. Same word, Allah. Allah, Allah, same word. So he doesn't declare himself to be Eloha because the Jews would not follow him because they don't follow Allah or they don't follow any man who claims to be Yahuwah. Yahuwah or Allah. But he claims to have the authority and the power. So from the time that the peace treaty is signed with Israel and by the time the domination of desolation is set up, the final peace treaty with Israel begins the 70th week of Daniel, or the last seven years of this age. But in the middle of the seven years, the anti-Messiah, who has deceived the world, will unmask himself and declare himself to have authority of life and death, in essence claiming to be Yahweh. Okay? That's called the ultimate abomination of desolation. Although the abomination of desolation is there right now. Okay? But what's going to happen is the abomination of desolation will spread. If we go to Daniel 9, it says there right now. And I'm using a different version here. So in Daniel 9, 27, he will confirm a covenant with many for one week. That's a week of years. Seven years. And in the last seven years of this age, and in the middle of the seven years, he will put an end to the slaughtering and the meal offering. And on the wings of the abomination, he will lay it waste. So in other words, the abomination of desolation is there now. That's the Dome of the Rock and the and the and um, Dome of the Rock and the um, other mosque, the second mosque on the Temple Mount. So that abomination is going to spread. It's already there. So it's going to be, it's going to go from the wing of the Temple Mount, it's called the wings, the Kanaf. Right now it's, it's, it's um, what's the name of that other mosque? I'm getting old. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mosque. No, no, the, it's called the... Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa. The Al-Aqsa mosque is on the wing in the corner, southwest corner, and the Dome of the Rock is in the middle, just south, just south of the Holy of Holies. So right now the abomination of desolation is in the southwest corner, that's the um, Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Dome of the Rock is in the middle of the Temple Mount, that's just, that's just south of where the Holy of Holies was. But that's going to spread north and northwest to where the actual Holy of Holies was, okay? So the abomination spreads. It's, it's already there, but it spreads in the middle of the seven years. Okay. That's when the Great Tribulation begins. Technically, it's not seven years. Technically, it's a short period of three and a half years, which starts when the Great... when the this abomination of desolation spreads. Okay. But that's not your question. So if we take a calculator, we don't have a calculator here. 1290 divided by 30 comes out to three and a half years. I believe it's um, 42 months. Go ahead and if you want to check me on that. Okay, remember, this is all off the top of my head, all right? Unlike you guys. Say that again? I don't have the luxury what is the number? of sitting home and typing stuff, okay? I, I don't have that luxury. Number? Um, Daniel 12, no, 11. The number you want me to check? Well, 1290 days divided by, by 30 should give you 42 months. Divided by 30? 30 should give you 42 months. And that's. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Say that again. 
1,230, 1,230 divided by 12? No. 1,290. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Are you taking too long? 1,290, you're going to get three and a half years. Okay, so that's the three and a half years from the time the abomination spreads until the, uh, the Great Tribulation is over and Yeshua returns. What is that? To divide by 12. Alright. 12 divided by. You, it's basically 36 months. It's, it's three and a half years, okay? But that's not your question. Your question is verse 12. Blessed is the one who is waiting earnestly and goes past the 1290 into 1335 days. See if we had a calculator. I had it, but it's not working. Okay. It's not working right. So what's 1,335 minus... Oh, you gave me the wrong number. 1,290. No, I didn't. <laughs> Do that math for me. <clears throat> no, 1,335 minus 1,290. Okay? So we're going to get... 45. 45 extra days. Okay? So why is there a discrepancy? Well, notice the ones who are blessed are the ones who are coming to the extra 45 days. Why? Because at the end of the tribulation, the, tri the end of the tribulation is three and a half years after it started. Okay. But there's an extra 45 days. Now that's a good question, and if you had a copy of the Restoration Scripture study notes, you would have your answer. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you don't have a copy. So, but it, it's in the study notes. Basically, the pattern in ancient Israel was to mourn for a leader. It could have been for everybody. Eventually, it became seven days of Shiva or mourning, but initially, it was 30 days. If you, in, in the book of, um, of Devarim, uh, in chapter 34, it says, Moshe died, and Yahweh buried him in the plains of Moab. He died on Mount Pisgah in the land of Moab. And Yahweh buried him, and no man knows of his grave until his day. <clears throat> so the, the children of Israel, our forefathers, not them, but our, our parents, mourn for Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, for 30 days. That's a full month. Okay. So why 45 days? Well, there's in 15 days of cleansing. When does Yeshua return? On the Feast of Trumpets. Correct? He returns on the Feast of Trumpets. Well, what is 15 days after the Feast of Trumpets? Huh? Yeah, that's right, Sukkot. And Sukkot is the kingdom age, when he lives and reigns among men and, and rules the world from Yerushalayim, and we rule and reign with him. Revelation 1.6, because we are kings and priests. So that's the extra 45 days. The Great Tribulation is over, we mourn for him. Okay, what does is, what is Zechariah 12.2 say? What does Zechariah 12.2 say? They will look, we will look at him whom we have pierced. And we will mourn for him as one mourns for his firstborn. And we will be in bitterness for what we have done as one is in bitterness for their firstborn loved one. Okay? So, it says... They will mourn for me whom they have pierced. The Hebrew there is, Histaklu alai asher dachru. Histaklu alai asher dachru. So, that period of mourning is 30 days. 30 for Moses, and then the prophet like unto Moses, Yeshua. Deuteronomy 18, 18. Is that the mourning of the two prophets? No. That would be the, the mourning over Yeshua. No. Okay. That would be the morning over you, sure. So, then when he returns, it takes you. What does Yeshua do for the first 15 days of his return? He cleanses the temple. It's got Islam, Allah, it's got defecation, it's got 
abomination all over the Temple Mount, on it, written on it. That's the unclean ruachim that have been lifted up there for, for uh, the better part of 1500 years, since 600 AD. It's got to be cleansed, just like in the days of Hanukkah, when the Maccabees cleansed the Temple, right? It took them what? Three and a half years, yes? Remember? Yeah. To the day. Right? To yes, the day. To the day. Three and a half years to the day. Same with Yeshua. After the abomination takes place, mm -hmm. three and a half years to the day. Just mm -hmm. like in the days of the Maccabees. And the Exodus. He comes, but he doesn't come and then go into a nursing home and then ask us to visit him. That's not what happens. <clears throat> he he's busy telling us what to do and help and through us Stop. cleaning cleaning it through the Zadokites have, that have returned to the temple. Cleaning the temple, 15 days of purification. Hallelujah. So that 30 plus 15 is what? 45. What's the difference between 1290 and 1200, uh, I'm sorry, 1,335? 45. Do, do the math, 45 days. Okay? So that should be a wow. Bart, I don't, I don't want a thumbs up. I want a wow. We have a follow up from. Um, okay, let's get to another Jesse. Let's get to okay. Let's get to Jesse, and then I want to. Then there's another one. We have a new that. sister, sister Elinda. Yes. So let's get to um, Jesse's follow up. Okay, go ahead. He says, "Didaki eight, yes, twelve answers. Someone told Someone said it was about when the day the temple was destroyed regarding Romans and the fasting Romans, the Book of Romans." 14, I believe. That the day of fasting? That someone said it was about when the, the, the day the temple was destroyed. That fasting. Oh, I mean, but that Which would... Was the, the, ninth the, ninth of, the ninth of the fifth month. But that yeah. would apply to any fast day. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words the, the Jews have certain... The rabbinical Jews have certain days of fasting that are built into their calendar. The fast of Tammuz, the fast of Gedalia, the fast of the fifth month, okay? These are all built into the rabbinic calendar. So, so they've chosen days to fast. That's all a waste of time for me. We're, as many as are, Romans 8.12, Romia 8.12, as many as are led by the Ruach, they are the sons of Yahuwah. Amen. So when the Ruach tells you to fast, you fast. And, and yeah, that would apply to that if, if you're out telling somebody else to fast on every Yom Shishi to get ready for Shabbat, go for it. If somebody's telling you to fast every Yom, Yom Shani, uh, the second day of the week, go for it. One thing is for sure, we are not to fast on Shabbat because Shabbat is a feast of Yahuwah's goodness. I don't see anywhere in Scripture where we are just the opposite, okay? We are, I don't see anywhere in Scripture we are supposed to be fed. You can show me, you can try to find one. Shabbat is a feast. It's a weekly get-together with Abba to eat and to drink and with our brothers and sisters in Yeshua. So the fast that he has chosen in Isaiah 58 is probably talking about Yom Kippur, not the weekly Shabbat. It's probably talking about an annual Shabbat. But, but I would be very careful, Jesse. I'd be very careful. I don't believe Romans 14 is anything to do with fasting. Just the opposite. It has to do with, with eating habits. Because like the Catholics, they eat fish on Friday. What happens if we as Nazarene Israelite believers want to eat fish every day of the week? Don't judge me and I won't judge you. If, if once a month I want to drive through Crystal Burgers and get Burger King or KFC, Kentucky Fried Children. <laughs> uh, you know, don't, don't, don't just take me in the drive-thru. Don't play religious games and hold it against me and say, last time I asked Jesse to drive me to take me to KFC, he goes, I shouldn't have picked you up from the airport. You should have gotten somebody else. He's looking out for me. <laughs> he didn't want me to eat the Kentucky children. <laughs> anyway, good question. All right, next let's, question. Let's go, to, let's go to another one. Let's go to another. The next question is from Elinda Nguyen. 
Uh -huh. Can you explain, and I hope I pronounced it right, sister. Elinda says, can you explain the two reapings, Revelation 14, 14 through 20? Who are these two populations? Okay. Thank you, Sister Elinda. Let's go to 14, 14. Go, let me see those comments so I can keep. Where you say there were two harvests. That was your two, question. Two reapings. Same thing. It's the wording she used. Yep. 14, 14 through 20. Let's see if we can find Who it. Who are these two populations? Okay. Revelation 14, 14 through 20. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's read it in context. Okay. And I looked and I saw a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud was one like the Ben Adam having on his head a golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle. And then, so that's, that's Yeshua obviously coming to harvest those who survived the Great Tribulation and are entering, going to be also entering his, his millennial kingdom. And another messenger came from the dwelling place crying with a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud, send your sickle and reap, the hour has come for you because the harvest of the earth is ripe. And the one sitting on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Okay, that's the first one. And another messenger came out of the dwelling place, which is in heaven, and he too held a sharp sickle. So number one, we have Yeshua, and then we have another messenger. And another messenger came from the altar, having authority over the fire, and cried aloud to him, who had the sharp sickle, saying, Send your sharp sickle, gather clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are ripe. And the messenger thrust the sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the winepress of the wrath of Elohim. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood out of the winepress, the bridles of the horses. Okay, these are two different harvests. One is of the righteous, one is of the unrighteous. The harvest of the righteous is conducted here by Yeshua himself. And the harvest of the unrighteous is conducted by an angel who separates the wheat from the chaff and he, he, he puts the chaff into Yahuwah's wine press of anger and wrath. And, um, and in scripture it also says he, uh, he burns up the chaff. He puts the wheat into his barns and the chaff. So we have two messengers or angels. Remember Yeshua is the son of Yahuwah. He is yud heh vav come in his own flesh, not Mary and Joseph's flesh, in his own flesh. He was the whole wheat unleavened bread from heaven. He had no dust composition to his nature. So he is harvesting, he's taking upon himself because he, he died for them, he bought them. He's taking it upon himself to harvest the, uh, the wheat. But he gives instructions to one of his angelic slaves, one of his angelic messengers, we don't know which one, to harvest the, or I'm sorry, not harvest, but collect the chaff, those who have rejected the good news, those who have rejected the king of righteousness. Those, Acts 4.12, those who have rejected the only name under heaven by which we must be saved. And he's given them instructions to dispose um, of the chaff where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth and where there is unquenchable fire prepared for the devil and for his angels. Okay, So these are the two harvests and they go right in conjunction, uh, sister, with Daniel 12 it, and, with, and, with, and with Matthew um, and with Matthew 13, we find this confirmed in Matthew 13 verbatim. We find this confirmed in Daniel chapter 12, 1 verbatim. Let's go to Daniel because we were just in Daniel. So we can kind of confirm that there. Daniel chapter 12. I'm working for you guys. I'm working hard for you. I see that? Four or five hours at a time. I'm all yours. All right? I'm working hard for you. How about helping us out and sending a little tithe every once in a while when you feel like it? How about that? Don't listen to the Ruach, all right? Just when you feel like it. <laughs> I'm only kidding, but you know, you know we love you and we, we appreciate your, your, your prayer, your spiritual, as well as your financial support. Don't give money to any ministry that is not real. If they're not real people, they're phonies. Don't give them a dime. All righty. Daniel, Daniel. they got to be real folks. Real people. Where are you? We just had Daniel. 
Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Chapter 2. Many of those who sleep in the dust will wake up. Some to everlasting life. That's with the first harvest. Some to reproach and everlasting abhorrence. That's the second harvest. So we see that there. We see it in Matthew 13 and probably 20 other places. Next question. Excellent. Okay, so she says, Thank you, sister. She says, Thank you. Is, is that at the end of tribulation? Elinda follows up. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's correct. Um, remember, this is the way it goes. The, the current Middle East treaty between Rabin and Arafat, okay? Begin and Sadat, Rabin and Arafat. It's all the Camp David Accords, the Oslo Accords. It's the same treaty, but they put another layer on it. The, the, the Islamic anti-Messiah comes from Turkey, from the modern state of Turkey, which is Mystery Babylon, because it used to be part of Nimrod's Babylon. He, he expands the treaty that allows the Jews, to, the rabbis, to rebuild the temple. And so the covenant is renewed. In the Hebrew, in Daniel 9, he doesn't, he doesn't make a covenant with Israel. He confirms the existing covenant. So don't forget that. Because if you're looking for a covenant to be made with Israel, you could be deceived. It's, it's the currently existing covenant that's expanded. That begins a great tribulation. Um, I'm sorry, that begins the last seven years. In the middle of the seven years, the abomination of desolation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where the anti-Messiah walks in to the rebuilt Holy of Holies and declares himself to have the power of Eloha, or Allah, okay? In Hebrew, Eloha. Not Yahuwah, because the Jews wouldn't be deceived. If he says, I am Yahuwah, and I have the power, they would, so he doesn't use, I don't believe he uses the true name. Because the true name would torture him to an early, premature death. I don't believe Satan is that stupid to, <laughs> to, to use the true name. So he's going to come in the name of Allah or Aloha, or the Paleo Hebrew folks like to say Allah. So you got to be careful with that Paleo Hebrew stuff. Okay, I tell you this because I love you. Okay? Paleo Hebrew is fine. I study it myself. But be careful how you pronounce it because you, might, you may, in fact, be pronouncing Allah. And some people who are starting to to speak Paleo-Hebrew are actually calling on Allah, okay? As opposed to the Aramaic, Eloha, okay? So be careful. You need to be under leadership. You need to be under under uh, a spiritual Abba who will look out for you and, and you could bounce things off, okay? Um, so what part, was your part follows up? No, what was your follow-up question? So, is this yes, the end of the tribulation? It's the end of the tribulation. Uh, when the, it says, the, the, no, if those days were not cut short, no flesh would survive. But for the elect's sake, they shall be cut short. So the elect, the redeemed, who were, re, who were alive at Yeshua's return, okay, those who survive the Great Tribulation, those who get saved, he cuts the date. It starts in the middle of the 70th week of Daniel, but it doesn't go three and a half years. They're cut short. Okay? Because of the days of the Christ, Yeshua said, if those days of the 70th week of Daniel are not cut short, no flesh would survive. But for the elect's sake, that's us, the redeemed, those days shall be cut short. So it won't even be a full three and a half years. Um, and then takes place the harvest at the end of the age. Once those two harvests take place, the wheat and the chaff are separated, having grown together up until that time. Um, the earth is being prepared for the for the eternity. The millennial the uh, the millennial kingdom will come, and then after the millennial kingdom, we have eternity. We see the millennial kingdom coming in Revelation chapter twenty. So yes, even chronologically, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. These are all preparations for the coming of the millennial kingdom. Revelation twenty four and five, and then the beginning of eternity in Revelation chapter 22. Yes, good question. You're 100% correct. Bart follows up with a thank you. That You're was welcome. Um, make sure you join us for all our services. Nice to, nice to meet new folks. No, that was Bart. No, but I'm talking oh, about... Yeah, Elinda. Elinda. Bart says, thank you. That was a very... Is Elinda, is Elinda something to do with, with like email? Like in other words, it's just Linda? No. But then when we add the E, it's Elinda? No, I don't. And nothing to do with like, okay. I, I'm sorry, I get confused sometimes. 
Your name you, is Elinda. Elinda, that's a beautiful Not name. Linda. Well, you'll see that I have a weird sense of humor. So. <laughs> thank okay, you, Bart, Elinda. Bart says, thank you. That was a very good, wow, exegesis, and it seems to fit. Okay, you're welcome, brother. You're welcome. Okay, then the next question comes from Brother Bruce Pataglia. He says, Shalia, here's... Are we here's... buffeting because we're... Yes, we are window. buffeting. We have other windows closed. I closed here. as many as I could. What about down here? I don't know about this. Shalia, here's a question. Have you read the book, The Harbinger? And if so, do you have an opinion about the prophetic implications that the book implies for America? Okay, a lot of the things in the Harbinger are, are good and true, um, but generally it's a, it's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The things that Jonathan Kahn wrote about at, pertaining to 9-11 are good. The things that he wrote about pertaining to Shemitah were all false. Okay, they were all false. Uh, and now he's redoing it. In the 2015, the banks would collapse, Wall Street would collapse. Well, 2015 has come and gone. So how did I know that that was wrong? Because Yahoo's calendar doesn't go by 2015. It goes by the priestly angelic calendar of the house of Zadok. Okay? So it's a, the, the, the book Shemitah is not worth the paper it's written on. And the Harbinger is a mixture of truth and error. Everything that Jonathan Kahn talked about in retrospect to what happened on 9-11 is good. <coughs> he shows from prophecy. We will rebuild, we will rebuild the Twin Towers that are spoken about in Isaiah. All that stuff is very good. But when he starts getting into 2015, where he predicted the collapse and this, and no internet, blah, 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 and Wall Street, the bank, that hasn't happened. So the answer to your question is, he's a human being, and you have to take everything a human being says, including what I say, with a grain of salt, and, and run it through the word of Yahuwah. Or, as in your case, ask, you know, ask me, and I consult the word of Yahweh along with you. So, uh, hope that answers your question. Who's next? So far, I think that's it. We have Bruce. Didn't Bruce have a question? That was his question. Oh, that was Bruce's question? Yes. About the, uh, okay, that's the harbinger. It. Okay, any other questions, comments? We're only here as long as you guys are participating. Oh, and Linda says, yes, I added E at the beginning and H at the end. Ah, nice. <laughs> See, I'm not that dumb, huh? As long as I drink my water. Drink your water. Hydrate your brain. Wonderful. That, that's clever, you know. I like that. Yes. Elinda. Or in Spanish, you would add a Q, no? Okay. Que linda. Mm. <laughs> okay. How, Any, how beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any questions? Going once. If you minimize that screen, would you get... No, this is where I can see all the comments. Okay, I can try a little less output, maybe. Alrighty, any other questions and comments? We are reading. Go ahead, any questions, comments? So far they've been excellent today, much better than last week. I guess we're getting used to it a little bit, getting more used to it on Facebook. We're fine. You went off the page. No, I'm fine, I'm fine, Okay, maybe you can minimize that. Any other, can you still no, see? No, I'm could, here to see all the comments. Otherwise you couldn't see it. Okay, any other questions, comments? This is your time, we gather in our turtle side chat every week. At this time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So use this opportunity. I know, I know we probably lost some folks who were on Uber, that's for sure, but we're, we're reaching new people. Mm -hmm. So that's also fine, you know. That's also good that we're reaching new folks. And then when you post things on Facebook, you know, they, some people review it afterwards, like they're not there live, but when they get home, and then uh, numbers shoot up to two, three hundred people. You don't get that on Uber. You don't, right. You're not going to get that on Uber. So it's true. We may we may have missing a few folks, but we are able to reach more folks. Okay. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Has the buffeting gotten worse? Aruna says, "How about is Ezekiel? the buffeting the same? Is it the same? It's the buffeting still? Yeah. Okay. How about Ezekiel? Arona asks." 
How about Ezekiel? And what are these wheels that Ezekiel saw? Okay, well, Arona, thank you. You have to be a little bit more specific. Uh, read it. talking about the wheels within the wheels. Yeah, I understand. Read it again, please. How about Ezekiel? And what are these wheels that Ezekiel saw? Okay. It's a little bit tricky because there are several references to the wheel, so I would need an exact verse to address your question more accurately if you give me an exact verse. But I know what you're talking about. It's called the Forbidden Chapter. Ezekiel chapter 1 is known in rabbinic Judaism as the Forbidden Chapter. The reason it's forbidden, it talks about the Son of Man who's driving the chariot, the Mir Kava, and the wheels are lifted up from the earth. The wheels are the Ruach, or the Spirit, lifts up the chariot. The Mir Kava is the driver, is Yeshua. And then in, in chapter 2 of Ezekiel, it speaks about the Ben Adam, or the Son of Man, who is actually orchestrating and driving the chariot. So, and of course, and then Yeshua himself is the power of the chariot. So he's not only the driver, he's also the wheel in the middle of the wheel, meaning the heart and the authority of the power of the chariot. Ch Ezekiel chapter 1 is the forbidden chapter, okay? There are really two, two main chapters in rabbinic Judaism that are forbidden because they point directly to Yeshua. One of them is Isaiah 53 and the suffering servant, which they claim is Israel, but it's not. And the second one is this. So, because men and women are seeing the Son of Man, they're seeing Yeshua, uh, in Ezekiel they have, uh, the rabbis have forbidden this chapter from being studied. Well, they claim that if you study Ezekiel chapter 1, that you'll go crazy, that you'll lose your mind. Okay? But that's just a, fa a, fa a false reason. The real reason is what you're seeing there, which is the power of the Ruach, Yeshua, who is both the energy of revelation and prophecy and dreams and visions that he is about to show Ezekiel. And he's basically telling Ezekiel to get on board. He's the power in the middle of the wheel, but he's also the driver. Okay, he also drives the chariot. Okay, so he's both. And he's basically telling Ezekiel to get on board. And what you read about in the next 48 chapters are all the things that the wheel in the middle of the wheel and that the driver of the mir kaba are showing Ezekiel. Good question. Very, okay, very so good. Okay, so yes, she confirms, yes, Ezekiel 1, and yes, the winged creatures versus uh, 6 through, chapter 6, 1 through 12, I guess she said, she meant. 6, 1 through 12 or verses? Versus she has VS1, oh, VS1, 6, 1 through 12. Versus 6 through 12. Right? Uh, it's kind of confusing there. Okay, it's verses 6 through 12. Yeah, the, the, the winged creatures are angels. Okay, they, they're angels. Let's take a quick she look. She says, I think you answered my question. Okay, so but I'll give it a little bit more, a little bit more uh, paint. Ezekiel chapter 1, okay, verse 6. Each one, each creature had. Okay, well, the four living creatures in verse 5 are the four archangels, Michael, Gabriel, <laughs> Raphael, and Penuel. Mm -hmm. That's confirmed in the book of Enoch. So the four creatures in Revelation are the same four creatures in Ezekiel chapter 1. Gabriel, Michael, Peniel, and um, Michael. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Peniel. So you nobody... Know, People, when they discriminate against Hispanics, they, 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 need, they need to understand that one of the four creatures in heaven is Hispanic. <laughs> Rafael? Yeah. So next, or Miguel? No, don't be smart. <laughs> Rafael. I think Miguel is also Hispanic. Miguel también? Miguel. Ay, ay, ay. So there were two Hispanic um, archangels. And you said the other is Penuel? No wonder the devil hates Hispanic. Penuel and Juan. No wonder the devil doesn't like Hispanic. I love his Gabriel. I, I Gabriel got, is Hispanic. I, I got no, from Argentina. I got no. I got no problem with Hispanic angels or women. Gabriel. I like Hispanic women, and I, I like three fourths of the Malachim are, are Hispanic. You know, you're lucky. I like Hispanic women. Yeah. Because you'd be in trouble. <laughs> you wouldn't have been rescued. <laughs> I'm gonna get chastised for this off the air. <laughs> anyway, but look, did you realize they're Hispanic archangels? 
three fourths of the Malachi. Well, I don't know about Gabrielle from Argentina. I don't know. I don't know about all that. Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he can speak Spanish. So anyway, those are the four archangels, and then it tells you their description. So yes, these are angels, and let's see the four living creatures. Verse thirteen. Yep. And verse 14, they run back and forth. Yep. Verse 15, uh, look at the living creatures and saw a wheel beside each living creature with four faces. Uh, yep. And um, so, so this Merkava is empowered by Yeshua, but it's also with the assistance of his army. Okay, so whenever you see Yeshua, you see his army. Those four archangels are the four leaders of his army, so they're also there lifting up the chariot as the chariot is moving, giving revelation, dreams, and visions to chosen men and women. You follow me? So you never, when Yeshua is moving and working through the mere kava and, and what the rabbis call the illegal chapter, Ezekiel chapter 1. So those, those malachim are illegal too. Those malachim are illegal. And it's true because in Judaism it's true. It's true. The, wow. the malachim are carrying the chariot. But they're illegal because in Judaism, what do you hear about? Gabriel and Michael. You don't hear about what? Mm -hmm. You don't hear about Michael. I'm sorry. You don't hear about Raphael and Penuel. No. To find out about Raphael and Penuel, you have to you have to check Enoch and other apocalyptic security. Uh, other apocalyptic literature. Yeah. That's true. So <laughs> by 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 denying the four creatures, mm -hmm. just like by denying the the, mis feasts. the missing feasts. Mm -hmm. And they, the names. They are trying to remove you from the authority of Yeshua mm -hmm. and bring you under their authority. Wow. Crazy. Baruch Hashem. Well, she, she follows up saying, uh, yes, I think you answered my question. By the way, these, these amount of live viewers are, are tricky because that's also mm -hmm. not right. That's at any moment. Mm -hmm. but, then when, given moment. but when you get off the air, it says like 180 views or mm -hmm. 100 views. So it's... But well, she crazy. answers awesome, and she also says, wow, that is totally awesome. I was a little creeped out at first, but now that you told me they are Yahuwah's messengers, that is awesome, and Yeshua at the wheel. Man. That's why there's that song, Take the Wheel. We've, uh, we've done, by Carrie Underwood, <laughs> yeah. you know? we've done a teaching on that, if you, uh, if, Arona, if you look it up on YouTube. Um, I, I believe it's called The Mysteries of the Mir Kava. It's, it's mm -hmm. like 20 More parts. Death. It's like 20, like 20, 30 hours of teaching. Just look, just type in, go to our YouTube channel and type in Mir Kava. You know, and um, M -I -R -K -A -A in, 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 in Qumranic literature, the, the, uh, the concept of the Maaseha Mir Kava, or the works of the chariot, are extremely important because they tie in the true Shabbat and the true feast and, and the way they live to angelic practice, okay? And the angelic, the angels are the ones who empower and carry and lift up Yeshua and the Merkaba, angel power. So, so the theme of, of what's called in Hebrew the Maaseha Merkaba are very is very prevalent in uh, Qumran literature. Okay, it's extremely pre pre prevalent. Prevalent. She follows up and says, uh, "I love my RSTME." Yeah. I'll try to minimize these times. You can add, that's part of the thing. Can you try? No. No, I'll mess it up. Okay. I love my RSTN. She follows up with that. And then she says, I can't oh I can't wait. I can't wait to watch it. I will watch it tonight. Amen. So then Mike Marisco, um Mariamni, can we still listen via phone right now? No, the phone's not working. Nope. nope. The phone is down. We are strictly Facebook. Okay, here we're gonna go backtrack to Benjamin. Zerach ben Moshe. Isn't the influx of Syrian refugees on this country part of those locust Arabim of which we have heard? Say it again. Isn't the influx of Syrian refugees on this country part of those locusts, the Arabim of which we have heard? By the way, some of this bufferting, we could change the settings next week and fix it. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, let me see what I can do now. It won't mess up the broadcast. Uh, I don't think it will. 844 AD. Okay, let's see. 844 AD. I 
think I know the problem. If it'll let me fix it, A40. Let's try that. It should. It should make this. It should make the buffering if it lets me change it. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. Read that question for me again, please. Yes. Um, let me see. Benjamin says or asks, isn't the influx of Syrian refugees on this country part of those locusts or Arabim of which we have heard? It won't let me. It won't let me change it in the middle. See. Okay. Yes, absolutely. That would fit that context. Yeah. That would fit because the Arabim are locusts and they're and they're multiplying uh, all over the place. Explain to them how Arabim is locusts. The it Hebrew translates to Hebrew. Hebrew word for locust is Arab or Arabim, and then Revelation chapter nine even talks about that. How the the locusts are unleashed from the area of the Euphrates. Well, where's the Euphrates? That's in the land of Syria, Iraq, and Iran, right? That's, that's the Middle East, right? The land of the, of the Tigris and the Euphrates. So we see that, Benjamin, we see that in Revelation. Gileana chapter 9, where it's called the armies of the East. Notice that? Not calling the armies of Europe. The anti-Messiah is not coming out of Europe. The Arabim, the locusts, are called the armies of the East. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that correct? Wow. So that's another confirmation that the Islamic anti-Messiah is coming out of the East. Uh, but for sure, that's a very, very good, that's a very, very good and powerful insight that the um, these infiltrators are the uh, locusts of the East. Okay. That was another, we're getting some excellent questions today. Yes. We're getting some excellent, excellent questions, questions and also some excellent participation. Please share the share the turtle side chat with others. Please, we only have another little while left, so. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you share it with others. Okay, Mike is having issues with his phone, and he can I hear it? He's asking, can we still listen via the phone? And we said, well, there's no I'm phone. I'm sorry, Mike. No, we're just, right, right now, now we're just on Facebook. You can review this, though. You can review this later, right? You okay. You can review the whole thing. Bart follows up his the, on the question on the four creatures. Was Raphael or Penuel not also the one giving the true calendar to Hanok? And I answered him, I think it was Uriel. That was another uh, archangel called Uriel. These are the four main... He works at Laredos. Right. <laughs> These are the four main ones. Uriel. He's also Mexican. But Uriel is also Mexican. Yeah, he makes... <laughs> he, he does the rice and beans with the lard. Oh, no. But then he wouldn't be kosher. But anyway, so our... Uriel, and chicken. Uriel is not one of the four, but, but Uriel, which means... You, or El, the light of El, yes. is the one who gave Enoch the light of the true times. So that was Uriel. That was a different Malach. But also... From Mexico. Well, come on. Also an archangel. <laughs> also an archangel. Baruch Hashem. Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay, so um, Arona asks again, what would I type again for that teaching to search for it? She's gonna, my reality's gonna put it in. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. Kava. I believe it's Mysteries of the Mirkava or something about, you know, type in Chariot or Mirkava. She can, she's typing it in now. We're getting a whole bunch of hearts. Somebody likes the turtle side chat. This is a live turtle side chat, guys. Amazing. Turtle side chat yeah. is back. Wow, that's cool, huh? And so is the turtle. The turtle's back. That's right. We had to end the turtle. She went on vacation. We had to end the turtle side chat when Irving was on vacation. Oy vina. <laughs> okay, Jesse Oy and vina. Cassandra Schober asked. You're a trip. Can you explain? Where did she come from? Where from you... Mexico. Irvina. Just like Uriel. That sounds like a rock group. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, a you great know, name. Wait till you tell it. Wait till I tell you what she was doing last night. I'm not going to say it. Wait till I tell everybody what, what I caught you. I was cooking. Meatloaf? <laughs> <laughs> I do cook I meatloaf. I don't think so. I don't think so. I cook meatloaf, y'all. Mm -hmm. Can you explain DSS Pesharim and if they will ever be restored to our days? Wow, that's heavy, Jess. I mean, you know a lot about that, too. The, the Pesharim were basically commentaries uh, of the scriptures. Um... And um, 
they went into in depth and then they went and had some insight. So, I mean, I don't know what I'm missing there. They were like, you know, commentaries, but midrashing, but they were apocalyptic commentaries about the end of days, you know, the teacher of righteousness, the sons of darkness, those who incorporate the lunar calendar, whether it's lunar or solar lunar. So, I mean, those, those things are interesting for study and research, but I don't, I don't see anybody sitting around today doing Pesharim. You know what I'm saying? That's really all I have to say about that. I mean, there's not much, there's not much to add. Unless you'd like to add something. I mean, that's, that's an accelerated Midrash, for sure. Those Pesharim are, are accelerated Midrashim. Okay, so then Arona follows up, totally awesome. I love you all. Thank you, Arona. You found it, we Arona? You, you found it? So I hope you found it. should be easy to find. Mm -hmm. Right now we have 11 viewers, 10 but that, viewers. But that's deceiving. It's very deceiving. You, you can look afterwards, you'll see. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Who puts who's we're putting getting all, these all those hearts? hearts. <laughs> I like it. Is that is that people the hearting right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. I like like we're like. flowing with hearts. Any tears? No tears. That we're about to go away. <laughs> Any other questions, <laughs> comments, themes, themes of interest that you'd like addressed? Any other themes of interest that you'd like addressed? We are working on the Restoration Scriptures Fifth Edition. We're, they're, they're being printed, so we'll be able to fill orders. We praise Yahuwah. They're going to be wonderful. And uh, we have many, many new study <laughs> notes. But Ruch Hashem, Yahuwah. That's funny. People keep liking them and not liking them. Maybe it's stuck. <laughs> Maybe Facebook is stuck. Maybe Facebook is liking that people are liking it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Any other comments? We'll give them a few minutes because there's a delay. Mm hmm Anything you want to share before we, while we're waiting? What are we'll, some, wait, we'll wait a little bit longer. What are some things to do to prepare for tomorrow for the feast? Do people, can people work tomorrow? Um, no, 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 no. Yom Tura is an annual Shabbat. Work is strictly forbidden. Uh, cooking is, is forbidden. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it's as strict as a weekly Shabbat. The, the, the requirements are as strict as a weekly Shabbat. It's, it's to be treated no differently than a weekly Shabbat. And it's also tomorrow is a, it's like a multiple celebration. Chodesh number seven. Yom Teruah. First day of And it's the fall. reminder of a feast of Noah when the abyss, the waters were, the abysses were open. The abyss was open and the waters were filled. So it's Memorial Feast of Noah. It, yes. It is a, a Chodesh, a new month. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's the first day of a new season. Yes. As well as the Feast of Trumpets. Mm -hmm. And no. today is the last day of summer. Shalom summer. Today is the last day of summer according to the, uh, the Zadokite priestly times. Yeah. Astronomically, it doesn't end until the 22nd. I'll see what day the 22nd is. That would be... The 22nd would be what? Thursday or Yom Echad, next week. It would be after Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Yom Echad. So there's a, there's a, um, there's a four day delay, right? A three, well, if Teruah is the 18th, you got one, two, three. Yeah, it's a four day delay. Isn't that interesting? Or interesting. Was, four. Four. Yeah. Okay, so we're asking, Mike Marisco says, what did Yeshua mean when he told the woman from Shomron, you have had five husbands, and the one you are with is not your husband now. Thank well, you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. I, well, I don't think, I think what for sure he was, she was uh, either doing one of two things. Either she was practicing polyandry, which I don't think so because she was an Israelite, and she knew that the Torah forbid her having more than one husband at a time, Whereas the Torah allows a man to have as many wives as Yahuwah gives him. Not as he wants, and not as he takes, but as many as Yahuwah gives him. 
But for a woman, she's only allowed to have one head because why? Because the man is the is the symbolic of Mashiach, and to have more than one Mashiach would be idolatry. So it paints a wrong image of Yeshua. He's not trying to deprive women from having more than one husband. He's only allowing women to have one husband so he doesn't misrepresent the picture of his rule and reign and authority over us. In other words, it would be a picture of idolatry rather than a picture of fidelity. Um, so she was either an Israelite who, who was a Samaritan, so it's possible she was practicing polyandry, but even then the Samaritans had the Torah, so they knew right from wrong. More than likely, she was a serial monogamous, meaning she went from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. She didn't honor her covenant for life and for fidelity. She just went from one to the other. <coughs> and whether she was practicing serial monogamy, which is against Malachi 2.16, where Yahweh says, I hate divorce, or whether she was actually practicing the sin of polyandry, meaning more than one husband at one time. Either way, it was sinful. Because Yahweh said in Malachi 2.16, I hate putting away. Okay, it's literally sh shalach. I hate putting away. But putting away often leads to divorce. So they're kind of synonymous. They're not exactly synonymous in the Torah, but, but putting away over a long period of time can lead to divorce. So it's okay to separate for a short period of time, but if, if, if you're separated for two, three, four, five years, you, I mean, the heart doesn't really want to get back together. So you have to be very, very careful uh, about listening to worldly counselors about separating for long periods of time. I don't see any problem with separating for a week, two weeks, a month, to kind of get your head together, get your heart together. That, that makes sense and can be very beneficial. Uh, there was a time in our, my marriage with Rifka that we were separated for, uh, it was two weeks, and it was over the, this issue. It was over the issue of plural marriage. So there was, there was no intention to divorce or anything like that, but we just needed a little space so she could work out this understanding in her life. Um, so, but long-term separation, is very, as I said, it's not from Yahuwah, and it's also very dangerous. Okay, it's very, very dangerous. Because I've seen couples that are long-term separate and very hard to get back in the saddle. So she was either guilty of polyandry or serial monogamy. And a lot of people who condemn Torah marriage, which is holy in Kadosh, which was one of the two main ways our forefathers lived, with one wife or multiple wives, as long as they were women of covenant. Rachel had to leave her idols under the oak tree. Okay, If she was going to be one of one of Yaakov's Israelite wives, she couldn't come with the idols, with Laban's idols. So we're not talking about just any women. Okay, if, if a man takes more than one wife, okay, and she's coming with her idolatry and her baggage, that's not polygyny, that's not Torah marriage, that's, that's lust. The woman has to be in a covenant relationship with Yahuwah and hearing Yeshua's voice because Yeshua said, my sheep hear my voice. Okay, so that's the kind of women that make up an Israelite <coughs> patriarchal family. That's a very important distinction. So when someone tells me they, they're practicing uh, polygyny, I'm, I'm like, well, okay, what, what are you practicing? Is it, is it kadosh or is it worldly? And so if the man is kadosh, he's going to need women who are kadosh to walk with him. Otherwise, they're going to do... They're going to circumvent, and they're going to, uh, you know, divert his progress. <clears throat> okay, so... Good question, Mike. Good following question. up that question of Brother Mike, is that also prophetically um, proportionate to Israel having the multiple covenants with Greece, Rome, Assyria... Babylon, Egypt, the multiple five lovers. Husbands. Very possible. That's a good point. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, multi that was Yahoo, That was Israel's sin. They had multiple lovers. That's a good good point, Mike. No, that wasn't. Oh, that's you. Yeah. Oh, then it wasn't a good point. <laughs> that was a good that's point. An excellent. That point. was an excellent point. Okay, but Mike excellent does follow point. up with something here. Let me read it. Here to we you. go with more hearts. Somebody's enjoying this. 
as Somebody's well. not turned off by our ministry. Wow. Look at this. Look at that. Oy. That's all the way. I light. think it repeats because there's my tears over there. Okay. So Mike says, what did Yeshua... No, that, that was a... Hold on a second. He says, the woman answered and said, I have somebody, no that, husband. That was one of the ladies that think I'm cute. No, that was me. You the tears? Oh. I put the tears because we're about to leave. No, it's not the heart. Okay. Oh, the heart, yeah. I'm not cute, I'm married. Be quiet. Don't talk that way. They think, they all think you're cute. Well, actually, in, but with our beliefs. That's, that's, that doesn't matter. Anyway. It says, the woman Whatever. answered. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshua said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that sest thou truly. Come on, Brother Mike, use the RSTN. <laughs> so, okay. Now, follow up with... So is there a question there? No, I think it's just a follow up. Well, but, here, but here's the point. Your point about the five husbands being representative of the five mm -hmm. major Goyim powers tov, that's a tov point, excellent point. But there's another thing. When you shoot, it's possible that she was a lustful woman. She played, you know, had all these husbands, maybe even five at one time. Although that's doubtful, because <clears throat> she's a Samaritan, and they, they did have the Samaritan. She seemed to have some fear. They had a Samaritan Pentateuch, okay, the Torah. So they, yeah. they you know, but uh, he, but but what he did say to her was, "Don't get any ideas. The one that you have now is not your husband." Me. He was talking about. He could have been talking about himself. But he could have also been talking about that prophetically with Israel. Right. Right. I'm not your husband right now. You need to covenant with me. Right. Or she could have been interested in him and said, and she, he'd have been saying, the one you are now with, I no, ain't your husband. But she had a husband because she went to go no, get But that's possible. It, it is possible. That's also another... Don't look at Yeshua. That's no, also another... He's married. And <laughs> so but, are you. <laughs> you need to get married. Okay, so then here we go. Arona is asking, is the calendar for sale on your site the same as the one I printed out? I think it, yeah, the one on our site, though, is is like this one here. Can you know? Yes. The it's ten professionally pages. printed. You can hang it. It lasts from year to year. You don't have to um, You don't have to keep ordering it. You don't have this to. This is the calendar. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's a wall calendar, so it's uh, we have it in our store. So, yeah, that'd be nice. It's for sale. Absolutely. Uh, Bruce adds, please, Shaliak, let this whole lesson be on the Internet. It is. Bruce, what happens is we, um, we record it. In other words, one of the advantages of doing Facebook, as opposed to the Uber class, is uh, when, the, when the Turtle Side Chat School is over, it posts live, and we post it live on the Internet. So it's there on my timeline. That's a good point. And that's one benefit, okay? And so every time we have a turtle side chat, it's going to be up on the internet. So for sure, for sure. Colette uh, adds... Hi, Colette. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for all your teaching. You're so welcome. And then Jesse... If, if, you, if you have a question, Colette, just go ahead. And uh, if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, go ahead. And we'll be happy to answer them for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then um, Jesse and Cassandra add a link for uh, early forms of Jewish, but I can't read the rest, so I don't know. But we'll check it out later. And then Aaron Ryan still have a pretty face, married or not? Oh, you say that to all the boys. That's not <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're actually that that pickup line was from something a video. Meatloaf it was a meatloaf, a meatloaf music video. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, it must have been while you were kissing me. That one? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, that was, and then the, it, 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 and it, it starts with, you say that to all the boys. Well, thank you, Aaron. That's very kind. No, it is. It is that soliloquy, that mono, monologue. Yes. You tell that to all the boys. You, that's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> I have a good barber. Brother Jesse Schober is my barber. He's, he's my distributor, and he's also my barber. So he keeps me fit. Not cardiologically, just facial. <laughs> My right. heart's another story. Nobody can fix my heart <laughs> except Yeshua. Amazing. But thank you so much. It's very kind. Arona says, yes, I might get that soon, the calendar. I really, really hope to still get a hard copy of the Septuagint or that new paperback RST. Or both. I would say get the Septuagint. 
I'll, I'll make you a deal. You move over here, I'll give you one of them for free, all right? Ooh. You come here, you join the community, and you you're going to get, and you stay, you're not going home. If to you go, we take away. You're not going home to Papa. If you go, we take away that we take away. The gift. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Any so other we'll give questions? You, we'll give you a gift as soon as you arrive. So you only got to pay for one, not both. You get both, but you only pay for one. That's all that I see here right now. No other comments or questions. And it is two forty nine. Now we'll, we'll stick. We'll stick we around. still see hearts, though. They keep popping. Oh up yeah, again. That's, that's, those are your fans, Maria. <coughs> no, they're your fans. You have a, a lot of gentlemen callers. Your fans. We'll be here if there's another question or a thought. We'll be here. I mean, we we committed till three o'clock. We just you know we we just need participation, which we're getting today. Some of the questions have been excellent. Okay, so some of the questions are the best we've ever had. I mean. Yeah. Or, at, or at least that we've had in a long time. Yes. Any other questions in uh, our Turkish side chat? Have it. Question Have you seen the turtle in the past few weeks? The turtle has returned, yes. But you saw, you saw the turtle lately? Uh, about, a week, about a week or two ago, I think. Mm. Okay, and are there any other new listeners who would like to chip oh, in? Oh, Demora. Deborah Wiley Sond. Oh, and then, uh, hold on. Arona says, are you sure you would really want me with all my baggage? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spank the baggage out of you, sister. You just come here. We'll worry, we'll worry about the baggage later. Yeah, absolutely. We will, of course we would. We yeah, Sean welcome. loves you with all your baggage. So yeah, will we. We would welcome you because you're just like us. You're struggling, but... In different areas, and uh, of course, you know we're not perfect. No, no not only nobody, nobody's perfect. We're getting perfect. But when we have perfect. when we have toughies to deal with, you know, we have issues or perceptions, or other people have all kind of. Everybody's got their own thing, and as a pastor, as a shepherd, you have to learn to um, to um, just you know meet people where they are <laughs> and accept them where they are, and not try to change them and. Um, um, and just receive them with all their limitations. As long as you're willing to get rid of your baggage. Yeah, but that happens naturally. A lot of that baggage goes in community. You can't isolate, you can't stay depressed because someone's going to hug you or ask if you want to go shopping or go. It's hard to, I mean, it's that some of that, in a community, some of that baggage, you know, goes naturally. When you know you let, you let other people hold you accountable. Right, but you have to be willing. Have to be willing. You don't have to come. Okay. Not willing. Deborah says, what are we to do when S period, A period, 10 is seriously attacking family? Well, one of the things that we have to make sure when, we are, when our family is under attack is to make sure that our marriage is the strongest relationship and that the priest of the home is walking with Yahuwah closely because... A family is only going to be as strong as the head of the home, um, positionally speaking. If the husband is committed to Yeshua, if he's unwavering, he's strong, you know, he knows how to hear from Yeshua, uh, that, that flows down from the husband. Into, if, if the husband is vacillating and weak and easily shaken, it, it, it's going to run through the whole family. Obedience is a key to Yeah, and you know, you can't ask a wife to follow me as I follow Yeshua. If you don't follow Yeshua, then you turn around and demand from your wife that, hey, you got to follow Yeshua. So, so it starts with the Kohen. It starts with the priest. You have to ask to see if the priest is, is uh, strong and in a committed relationship with Yeshua. And start, check that. you got to check that. Okay, that's the first step you need to check. My sister Sophia, she's, I told her she can come over. Oh, cool. So that's the first step you have to take. Okay? <clears throat> then once you take that step, then you've got to check all the other relationships. You know, how's my heart? You know, am I walking in forgiveness? Am I walking in mercy? Am I holding on to an anger issue? Am I trying to justify anger? So the first thing you've got to do is the priest of the home has to take stock of himself. Then, the, then 
you and I also have to take stock of yourself. I'm speaking in general generalities yeah. because I don't know specifics. Well, she adds a little bit more. It okay. Says, she added, can you see my question? Yes, we did see your question. We're answering it right now. Yep. Something happened to a family member and another was made to witness it and they are having a hard time getting through. I think we need to speak in private, please. So she's requesting probably a private uh, conversation we can do that. later. It would have to be after the Feast of Trumpets because tomorrow is the Feast of Trumpets. We need, I need to get ready. We need to prepare. We have visitors from out of town. Um, yes, but we'll so, be praying for you. Yeah, absolutely. We will pray. But we can, we can speak privately during the coming week. That's not a problem. And uh, we can, I'm sure we can help you uh, in terms of private counseling. So that's not a problem. We, and I think one key is uh, what, how it says in Scripture that um, when we obey, the enemy will flee. What is the wording exactly? Submit yourself to Yahuwah, resist the devil, and the enemy will flee. Submit and then resist. In other words, getting back to what I was saying earlier, you can't resist the enemy without uh, submitting. See, a lot of people, I resist Satan, I'm, I bind you, I take authority, that's a waste of time if you're not first submitted. Pe right. People miss Yaakov James 4, 7. It doesn't say resist the devil and he'll flee. It doesn't say that. It says first. submit yourselves to Yahuwah. And submission is Torah obedience, obedience and a repentance and a change of lifestyle from lawlessness. To obedience, you follow me. So, so um, in order in to words, in follow or, the instructions, so you don't get whipped. In order to resist the devil, that person or the people there that are involved in the situation themselves have to be submitted. But you know, this sounds like something we need to be a little bit more specific about. Regarding a member, what is she saying? A member of a family? Yes, yeah, she, she said something happened to a family member, and another was made to witness that, and they are having a hard time getting through it. So we need to see what happened. That sounds very sensitive and very personal, mm -hmm. and that needs to be addressed personally. Right. Okay. Uh, Arona says thank you to the Rabbah for this class and all the classes. Deborah says thank you. Bruce Pataglia says, when are you taking us to Israel? You are in Israel, brother. Well, Bruce, I tried that one time with my group congregation in Broward County. And we did a lot of planning, a lot of work, a lot of uh, fancy brochures. And uh, in the end, nobody signed up. So apparently, Yahweh does not want me to lead a tour to Israel. And so basically, we have to get on somebody else's tour. But, but when I said, you are already, you are in Israel, as you're learning all these things, you're getting ready for your real entry into the land. It's more important for you and others to learn the, the ways of Israel so that when Yeshua takes us to the land, Cross you, the, you're, crossing the Jordan. you're going to be ready to live there. What's going yes. on there is, is you don't a, go. it's a secular, uh, anti-Yah, anti-Torah, anti-Messiah, against Yahuwah's son. It's nice, it's the start. I don't go along with the, the Matt Nolan garbage that it's a synagogue of Satan, it's an illegal state, and all this all this nonsense, okay? I don't I don't go, I believe Yahuwah started it, but hasn't finished it, okay? Joseph is coming back, Ephraim is coming back, but it started with, for some reason, he started with secular Jews. He started mm -hmm. with Jews who, who are not circumcised in the heart, that Yahuwah's prerogative, and he started the work. But it says in Philippians 1 6, he who begun a good work will complete it and will perform it. So rather than throwing the baby out with the bathwater and saying that the modern state of Israel are a bunch of heathen, no good people from the synagogue of Satan, no. uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't prescribe to that. We, we think it's the beginning of a restoration process, and the Yahuwah saw fit to bring the Jewish unbelievers back to the land, rabbinical Jews as well as unbelievers, to show his might and power when he returns, to show us how easily he's going to overthrow them and how easily he's going to get rid of them. See, he put them there to show who has the true power. See? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're, they're there for a reason. Right. Okay. And yeah. plus it's a land of treasures. It's a land where we have 
historical relics to confirm yeah. everything we're reading in his work. And even there we have ten, seven to 10,000 uh, believers who love Yeshua and keep Torah. So even in the land, he has a remnant that is not uh, bowed the knee to Baal or kissed his ugly lips. So, and they're uh, learning to be more Israel. Correct, but we don't we don't need to go because uh, we don't feel a great need. You can let her. We don't feel a great need to be there uh, at this point. We we rather have Yeshua take the time and open the way and and lead us and, and lead us back um, in his in his time. So that's really what we're what we're interested in. Come on in. So that that about wraps it up for today. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. So you got... Okay. Well, if you're having trouble breaking up on that end, we're going to try to adjust the settings a little bit next week and make it, make it a little bit smoother. I think I can do a couple of things to work it out. Uh, but uh, it also some of the interference could also be on your end. If you missed anything because you had to step out or because of buffeting, we're going to have this posted live. Uh, on our Facebook timeline, so we'll have that there for you. Not to worry, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow on the air at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Feast of Trumpets. Get out of your shofars, and we're going to uh, practice being in rehearsal so that when the Master comes, he may not find us sleeping or beating up on our fellow servants, uh, but rather looking up as our redemption draws nigh. Shalom, shalom to all you turtles out there. Shalom, shalom, everybody. Y'all bless y'all. We actually partook, partook of our turtle chat. See y'all tomorrow. Shalom, shalom.